you haven't seen any sackings yet this season. This is interesting. Well, compared to last season in particular, any thoughts on, on why? I think, firstly, there was such an early sacking last season because Scott Parker kind of went down in, in flames after that, you know, 9 0 defeat to Bournemouth against Liverpool. I think this season, some of the clubs at the bottom of the division, so your Sheffield United, your Burnleys, your Bournemouths, um, Sheffield United are in a very tricky situation because, you know, they sold the vast majority of their best players in the summer. Um, Ilman Anjai, uh, Sander Berg. So Heckenbottom's kind of working with his, his hands tied behind his back a little bit. Um, Burnley have obviously gone on this great cultural revolution under Vincent Company, and at the moment he's maybe foolishly trying to stick too hard to that. Um, but maybe it would be a little bit too early to kind of just halt that process and completely revert back to safety first at all costs that they've done in the past. And then very similar with Bournemouth with Areola, where they're trying something new, something fresh. Um, and I'm sure Dom will remind us of what happened at Crystal Palace may maybe over a decade ago, where they brought in De Boer and tried to go on this fancy cultural how old, reset. How old are you? It's in 2017, wasn't it? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. It feels longer ago. Um, but obviously, you know, Cri <laughs> Crystal Palace went on a great cultural reset and, and kind of abandoned it after four games. Yeah. So maybe Bournemouth are thinking, we need to ride this out a little bit longer. Um, but that's my kind of take on the situation. You've gone bottom end of the table. Uh, what do you reckon? Yeah, I think obviously last season we had the World Cup slap bang in the middle, which yeah. I think really, A, concentrated all the games into a very short period, but I think concentrated clubs' minds as well. That gave them a really, you know, big part of the season to sort of reset if they wanted to. And we did see that with people like, you know, Emery coming in and Lopetegui. Um, but also I think this season feels a lot more set. Like if you look at metrics like expected goals, in terms of open play, XG, the three teams that came up have got the lowest three, which isn't always the case. And, you know, we haven't seen all three uh, team promoted teams go down, straight back down, since 1998. So it doesn't happen very often. In fact, it's only happened once in the Premier League era. So I think that gives maybe club or owners and people that run clubs in the lower half of the Premier League this season a little bit more confidence to that their team can turn it around. So I think that's kind of what we're seeing. A thought for where these teams are. So at this moment in time, we're looking at Luton, we're looking at Sheffield United, we're looking at Burnley. What success for any of those teams right now? I mean, Luton, did they expect to go down? Do you get rid of your manager and then, you know, hope that you stay in the Premier League? On current form, probably not. Do you just accept that actually we're just playing to stay in this league and then we'll maybe bounce back next season? I mean, it's a pretty early time to be making that call, yeah, right? But it's a, rem I mean, the Luton story is remarkable in itself. Mm -hmm. I think they're, I don't know, it sounds dreadfully patronising, but the reality is they're probably still pinching themselves that they're in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. And, and, Actually, Rob Rob Edwards is probably the the man who gives them the best chance of staying in the division as well because he knows how they those players play. Um, he will play to their strengths, and you know they won't get hoodwinked into trying to change their style just to just to survive. I, you know, I think they're really realistic about how they look at things. I mean, Burnley's an interesting one, just because they had such a radical change of style last year, which was brilliant for the championship, but doesn't look as if it's going to be enough to keep them in the Premier League. Yeah, for sure. What do we make of, um, and I'll, I'll be interested on the stats on this, uh, the sort of bounce back ability of that sort of new manager, right? Like that manager bounce, you know, Sean Dyche, I remember last season coming in, they beat Arsenal, right? And everyone was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> and uh, Vincent has sort of not really hit much higher, really. Uh, you know, th 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 there's a saying that obviously Everton stayed in, in the Premier League when they were looking at relegation, but does that often equal, you know, success? I think um, in a lot of those situations, some players are probably just so relieved the manager's left mm. that there's, of course, there's going to be an uplifting mood. Mm. So forgive me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty certain Frank Lampard had kind of excluded Abdullah Decore from. Everton squads like it wasn't really a feature and now you look at Decor I think he scored some very very crucial goals in those final few weeks of the season to basically help Everton stay up he's one of the first names on the team sheets so sometimes it's not so much like bounce back ability but just that kind of weight that's been lifted from players shoulders that a manager they didn't get on particularly well with or a style they didn't like has kind of been removed um, but hiring and firing managers constantly is only going to 
get you so far. It's about having a long-term strategic plan in place, which might sound boring to, to people that just love the chaos and love the idea that a new manager is going to come yeah. in on a white horse mm. and instantly mm. solve everything. But actually... I mean, if he came in on a white horse, that would be quite yeah. <laughs> Sean Deitch on the white horse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see that. <laughs> El Deitch himself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, way more, it, it's way more from the top to the bottom it, in that regard. Yeah, our colleague John Muller did a piece at the end of last season looking at this and, and kind of points out that it is the variance that you want. It, it, when a new manager comes in, it's almost at the point where the club's hit that point where they need something to change. And he, I think he had a line saying um, the club could have simply had a press conference to announce a vibe shift. And it's, it's yeah. kind of true. It's yeah. like that's often what it is, you know, and you will get a win or a couple of wins in the first few weeks of the new manager. But then generally, statistically, it does settle back down to, to where they were. Interesting. Um, what about this idea of sticking? And we've touched on it here, sticking with the manager. Pep Guardiola, you know, talked the Manchester derby, he was like, J just stick with the guy, you know, give us some time. Um, but is that is that fans, you know, and their impatience with fans and clubs are so so quick to, to pull the trigger? Because it has been shown that, I don't know what the stats are particularly, maybe you can help me out on this, Duncan, on staying with managers and then at some point it does turn around. I mean, last season, obviously, David Moyes and Steve Cooper were under pressure at various points during the season and, and they got stuck with and... Um, and both kept their teams up. So, yeah, I mean, there's other examples. Obviously, Nigel Pearson turned it around with Leicester, you know, very well that season. They stayed up. Um, and then they did quite well the following season, I believe. But, yeah, I mean, it's easy now, I think, for fans to get on to, het up and onto a little bandwagon of, like, a change will will make a difference. But I think, to the point we made a few minutes ago, that I do think fans have become a little bit cleverer in understanding that it isn't just a, a case of a, a quick change. We'll... Uh, I think you can tell when a change is needed. When you, you know, the the, the fabled he's lost the dressing room that sort of thing. You can tell when it's at that point, maybe. But often managers are, are doing okay. Just the results aren't there. If you like this video, click subscribe for more content like this. We'll be joined by the likes of David Ornstein, Matt Slater, Adam Crafton, Carl Lanka, and plenty more through the season to bring you the inside track to the biggest stories in football. If you'd like to listen to the full episodes for free. Search the Athletic Football Podcast wherever you get your podcasts from.